Mike Gray. I'm from Maine. I've lived in Maine my whole life. I, right now, I live in Lewiston. Uh, I just came in from the rain. I don't always look like I'm sweating profusely, uh, but sometimes I do. <laughs> About five to six years. I'm not counting 2020 because as far as my records show, it didn't exist. So I don't count that year, but yeah, about five or six. My real life persona, I'm kind of quiet and I just kind of avoid people. But on stage, I'm, uh, I'd say I'm angry. Uh, it's all the stuff that I can't say in real life. That's my stage persona. Uh, well, I've had several worse gigs. One time I was at uh, Panucci's in Concord, New Hampshire, and I was on stage, and it's a little stage barely raised up, and the bathrooms are right next to the stage. And this guy came out, m middle of one of my jokes, just goes, you suck! <laughs> and uh, yeah, that happened a few times at that place. The best gigs I've had here at the Franco, uh, right here at CBU, I've had some of my best ones. The Shaskeen, I've had some good ones. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I typically don't write about anything unless it irritates me on some level. So if it's something that I find that is a contradiction or something I just don't like, or something pop culture-y that I don't like, I'll start to just write, write it down. And I... I just start with a statement sometimes, and then I just go from there, and then I'll take all the stuff out of it that I find funny and make a bit out of it. Yeah, uh, Bill Hicks was the reason I started, and and uh, Doug Stanhope is one of my favorites. Joe DeRosa lately has been one of my favorites, and uh, always Carlin, everybody loves Carlin, and Bill Burr. And apparently not everyone has, because those kids don't always come back. <laughs> I wouldn't have Easter any other way. I grew up in a small town, a couple hours north of here, called Corinna. I don't know how many of you know Corinna. It's, yeah, it's not, yeah, I mean, nothing to write home about, you know, but I, I grew up there, and I, you know, I didn't fit in, as you can imagine, because I look like I front a Megadeth cover band. <laughs> turn magician or something. I'm not sure what, what my look is going for here. But uh, I could not, I couldn't go into town there. You know, every time I did, I'd see this one guy and he would always have this rusted, shitty pickup and just tobacco spit all down the driver's side door. You know, he'd be revving up his engine, blaring country music out of it, impressing all the girls who wouldn't bang me because I'm too weird. <laughs> And every time I saw that guy, he'd have to roll his window down and go, cut your hair, bang! <laughs> that guy was my high school drama coach. <laughs> that he was the most liberal dude in the whole town. I was just glad it wasn't my shop teacher, because I have no idea what that guy would do. He'd probably just tie me up and drag me for a few miles. <laughs> That's what you get for not liking Toby Keith and having a crew cut like the rest of us. That was horrible, man. And as if, as if that wasn't bad enough, my mother is a Jehovah's Witness. Which, like, imagine how fun that sounds, right? Being raised a Jehovah's Witness, how fun that is. It's way worse. It's way worse than you could even, like, if you had a really bad day, you woke up late, 
And you're like, oh man, I gotta get dressed, I gotta walk the dog, I gotta, you know, and you're like I gotta get my coffee, and then you get there, and they mess up your coffee, and then you, you just choke it down because you need the caffeine. Then you get to work, and you're late, and you're just like, you know what? I'm not gonna get lectured by my boss another time about being late. I'm just not gonna go in. But you don't want to be a liar, so you just open your car door and you just smash your hand in it. Just repeatedly, over and over again, till you break every single bone in your hand. That's actually more fun than being raised a Jehovah's Witness. Because <laughs> at least if I did that, I could go home and beat off with my good hand and not feel guilty. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun. You know, I went to, we used to go on a vacation every year, and uh, I just went to Texas. It was the second time I went to Texas. First time, I was like two years old. I don't really remember it. And so we would get together every year. We'd get all our vacation stuff ready, and then we would sit around and look at pictures of that vacation. That was our vacation for the next 15 to 20 years, just talking about that vacation. My mother was always showing me pictures. Isn't this cool? You love that. I'm like, I'll take your word for it. I don't really remember any of it. So can we do this again, maybe? Can we go back? Oh, no, that's way out of the budget. <laughs> All right. Don't hurt yourself. Bad. But, uh, you know, just having a, having a child look like that, it's weird. You know, my mom's, despite all this, is proud of me. And she's like, you know, I'm really glad you never got into drugs. Like, it's a wonder I didn't, Mom. <laughs> With this upbringing, you're, you're lucky right now I'm not just a, like a porcupine with just heroin needles out on, on my back. Like, you're just you're lucky. <laughs> so lucky I'm not that. Between her and dad, because my dad was an alcoholic. I mean, he's, he's 23 years sober now. But um, that's when he died. So technically, <laughs> technically he's been sober for 23 years. And... Uh, that wasn't fun. That was that was weird, you know? Because he would yell at the dogs every night. I don't know why. He would just always yell at the dogs. And he would take it personally when the dog wouldn't come to him. He'd be sitting there in his recliner like, look at this. Look at this, Mike. Look at this dog. She's staring right at me. I'm calling her name. She's not coming to me. Just look at her. Look at her. Just, just looking right at me. Not coming to me when I call her. Like, Dad, the dog's deaf. <laughs> She's not going to come to you. She can't hear you. She literally can't hear you. And then uh, you know, I'd bring friends over, and that was a treat, because he'd be giving me drunken life advice, which is, I don't know if it's the best or worst advice, because it's entertaining, but it, you know it's not going to go anywhere. Like, you know, Mike, you can do anything you put your mind to, you know that? You can be anything you want to be. You know, you just think really hard like you read The Secret, and he's drunkenly explaining the secret to me. You know, you can do anything you want. You just put your mind to it. Like, great, Dad, while well, you're putting your mind to pissing all over yourself. Uh, my friend and I are going to go outside and hit each other with sticks because there's nothing else to do in this town. <laughs> and my friends were always like, dude, is your dad drunk? <laughs> you mean your dad's sober? <laughs> Wait, so your dad doesn't get drunk and yell at the dogs every night for no goddamn reason? What kind of utopia do you live in? And you have a spare bedroom. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's 2022 now, and I think sometimes science has given us things that we don't need and nobody ever asked for. Is anyone else getting that from science? Because like they've been talking about increasing the longevity of human life, and they're saying we could see ages of up to 150 years. 150 years old. First of all, they're saying that like it's a good thing. And if that were the case, the age of retirement would be like 108. And you wouldn't age gracefully, no matter how much they say 60 is the new 40. Well, even if 90 is the new 70, you're not going to want to work for another 18 years. You're probably going to age like a normal 90-year-old now, and then that's it. You're just going to be stuck like that for 60 years. 60 years, oh man, I can't get around like I used to. 60 years, like, oh, my knee's swelling up again. I think we must have a storm coming in. Uh -huh. 60 years, just like that. That means you'd be middle-aged at 70. 
You want to have that midlife crisis? You know, that you wanted to buy a Corvette or a Bolt impulsively? You got to wait till you're uh, 70 now. 70, 70. You want to run off with that hot 60 year old? You got to wait till you're 70 now. Can't do that. I don't want to be middle aged when I'm 70. I want to be on death's door when I'm 70. I want to have one foot in the grave with nicotine reaching for the other foot and depression behind me with a shovel. That's where I want to be at 70. That sounds like a good life to me. Another thing uh, science gave us is NASA. And I like astronomy. I think astronomy is really interesting. It's cool. You know, it's, 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 I mean, it's wild physics and all that. I, I love learning about it, but it also doesn't really... Fuck NASA, what have they done? You know what their latest excursion was? They shot a rocket at a meteor to just crash it on the meteor. For no apparent reason. The meteor wasn't heading towards us. They just, just how many millions did we have to spend so some nerds could target practice? That's, that's my question in all this. And besides, you know what NASA was? How it started? It was just dick waving at the Russians. That's all it was, the whole thing. Like, oh, hey, what you got over there, Ivan? Oh, you got Sputnik? Cool. We got satellites, too, actually. Um, yeah, we made it to the moon first. Did you know that? We made it to the moon before you did? Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually looking at Mars now, too. So uh, suck on that, Ivan. Uh, now that I've thoroughly depressed you, I want to bring up our first comic of the night. And this guy's awesome. I've worked with him several times. It's very funny. He once opened for the late Gilbert Godfrey. Uh, very, very funny guy. Please welcome Nick Dufault. Hey, I'm Nick Dufault from Lewis and Maine. Uh, actually, it is my four-year anniversary today. Uh, I had my graduation show, took an adult dead stand-up comedy class in uh, April of 2018, so it's four years today. I think it's pretty close. I'm pretty self-deprecating. Self uh, probably some more on that later, but uh, definitely a self-deprecating comic. Uh, I like to have fun and make fun of myself. Um, so I would say it's pretty close to who I am off the stage as well. Um, my favorite gig by far, uh, it's kind of timely with the uh, recent passing of Gilbert Godfrey, my favorite comic. I uh, got to open for him two years ago in January of 2020 in Rumford at uh, 49 Franklin. So that was amazing. I uh, got to chat with him a bit and uh, he's such a cool character and I love, love his act. Um, and he's really going to be missed by everybody. As far as probably one of my worst gigs, uh, there was a brewery show uh, up north that uh, I just really didn't hit at all and just, you know, if you can't take a bomb in comedy, you better get out now because it's going to happen to everybody and I'll have many more, but uh, definitely just was not fun and uh, my best friend that was there with me said that he saw me quit during my set about three different times, so I quit comedy. Craft Brew Underground, good evening. Uh, Mike said he looked like he fronted a uh, Megadeth cover band. I look like if the front man of Backstreet Boys didn't give a shit about his appearance. I'm a lot less edgy, so we're going to just get right to it. Uh, as Mike said, my name is Nick, and home Nick likes to say some things that are edgy or a little risque, but work Nick wouldn't do that. See, I enjoy having a job, and I try to keep it pretty PC at work as a result. I had a good friend at work and she and I used to joke around a lot and I remember one time in particular I went to visit her in the office pretty early in the morning. She had a breakfast muffin on her desk and I remember work Nick thinking in his head how funny it would be to randomly walk up and squash her breakfast against the desk to get a reaction out of her. But what home Nick said out loud to her was, so what would you do if I just went down on your muffin right now? <laughs> Another time we had a potluck at work and somebody had made some potato salad that I wanted to try. But there weren't any serving spoons for it. So I remember work Nick thinking in his head, how the hell am we supposed to eat this? Am I supposed to eat it with my hands? 
But what Homenick said out loud to his female coworker was, so what are we doing, fingering this? <laughs> I just don't learn. Another girl at work was telling me how she'd just come back from having a baby. She said a little later on in the conversation that she was getting ready to go do the mom thing. And it's in me, I'm thinking, oh, that's nice. She's at the end of her shift and she's going home to be with her kids. So I say, enjoy that. She then gets a super disgusted look on her face. The mom thing that she was referring to was that she was going to pump. Now that I've got over the embarrassment, I can't look at a glass of milk the same way. Every time I see one, I'm the one that gets all pumped up, you guys. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, a lot of people are badass. I am not a badass, or I am in my own right. And I have a lot of trouble with my feet, so while my badass friends are busy trying to figure out which tattoo they're gonna get next, I'm busy trying to figure out which toenail I'm getting removed next. I'm addicted, what can I say? Once you get one done, Badasses smoke pot. I have never smoked pot. And for the last 15 years, when I go to my cousins for birthday parties, I thought he's had a skunk infestation in his house. <laughs> I've given him an Orkin gift card for Christmas as long as I can remember, and the bastards never seem to appreciate it. I never knew why. My cousin's always just like, why do you keep giving this to me? What am I supposed to do with it? Ah, <laughs> oh, it, uh, it's just not going well for me. I went to visit my best friend and his wife right before she had a baby, and I haven't been around a lot of pregnant women. I mean, shocker, look at me. And I was pretty interested to hear what she was having to go through, and I said to her, never mind a whole new wardrobe. You must need to buy a new coat while you're pregnant and everything. She says, yeah, I do need to buy a new coat while I'm pregnant. I said, oh, that's funny. I have to buy a new jacket every nine months to have one that fits too. <laughs> Do you say a silent prayer in your head when you go to buckle your seatbelt across, uh, across your stomach? She goes, oh, absolutely. Me too, twinsies. <laughs> uh, it's just not going well for me with the ladies, so I've spent a fair amount of time in the strip clubs. And I remember one time I went to a strip club in St. Louis, and we got right in there, and a stripper came right over and tried to entice me into getting a lap dance. I should tell you guys that I wrote my senior thesis in college on human trafficking in the United States. So I engaged in the very flirty and light banter of making sure she wasn't stripping against her will. You know, foreplay. Just, uh, it's crazy. I just, like, I do not want to be responsible for shooting a hostage, if you know what I mean. It's just, that's not me. Where I haven't had much luck with the ladies, I also figured out that they have uh, condom, condoms have expiration dates printed on them. You guys realize that's just a suggestion, right? That's just like the best buy date on food. You can still eat it. It'll taste like shit, but it's not gonna kill you. And as a young teenager, I figured I should start keeping a condom in my wallet just in case. Now that condom held the same significance as the red phone that was used for diplomacy between the USSR and the United States during the Cold War. You gotta make sure you have it, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you're never gonna need to use it. When I wrote this joke, it's here that I would say it's as likely that I get laid as we go through a nuclear apocalypse, but given the recent events with Russia, I think it's safe to say I'm getting fucking laid. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, I went on a trip with my brother to see the Bruins play in Minnesota for his birthday, and we ended up in a bar in Minneapolis. We wound up drinking this shot called a duck fart, which is Kahlua, Bailey's, and Crown Royal, and I got messed up. Surprisingly, whatever else happened that night only comes back to me in bits and pieces. After a few duck farts, I remember simply quacking at the bartender in order to signal for a new round. <laughs> wank, 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 wank. I remember ending up in a diner and screaming at them. What kind of a diner doesn't have corned beef hash? <laughs> Next thing I knew, I was miraculously back in my hotel bed and was awoken by my brother yelling at me for pissing in his suitcase during the night. <laughs> in my defense, Samsonite is super waterproof. For his birthday, I got my brother a new urinal. I mean suitcase. Sorry. Oh, I've uh, learned that there are three things sure about life. Death, 
taxes, and if you order mozzarella sticks at a restaurant, no matter who you're with, everyone at the table knows exactly how many mozzarella sticks everyone else has had. As soon as the mod sticks at the table, everyone is suddenly a math whiz, like freaking Rain Man with the toothpicks. You know what I hate? American cheese. How is the worst cheese named after the greatest country in the world? Granted, American cheese is a product of industry and innovation, but get that the hell away from me. However, if American cheese is all you have, give it to me. I'll take it. This chubby guy is not about to eat a regular hamburger. I'm no terrorist, you guys. Oh, I love spicy food. I love it a lot. But I feel like this whole craze is going way too far. Nowadays, everything is either spicy or flaming hot. There's flaming hot mac and cheese, flaming hot smart food popcorn, even flaming hot funyuns. When does it end? I saw an ad the other day, and they're like, "Bump up your soluble fiber intake with new flaming hot metamucil." <laughs> Uh, how about no? And you guys know, you know, the next commercial we're gonna be seeing is a guy coming home to his wife and he'll be like, baby, I know you said you want to spice up things in the bedroom. So I got us this flaming hot cock ring. But don't worry, because it's Cheetos flavored for her pleasure. Uh, uh, growing up as a kid, um, if I would be out in public with my parents together and they would introduce me to someone new, that new person would invariably say I look just like my mother. Well, that's when my dad would always speak up and say I look just like him from the waist down. <laughs> I guess genetics is absolutely the reason why I've always hated my father. <laughs> As I've uh, alluded to multiple times, I haven't had a lot of luck with the ladies, but I did almost get some action recently, even though I didn't want it. My uncle has a 240 pound bull mastiff named Tank. I went with my dad to visit my uncle and I sat on the futon. I didn't think much of it when Tang jumped up on the futon and sat behind me, but I then became exceedingly concerned when I felt his massive paws on my shoulders. I then turn around in time to see his manhood exposed, or doghood, I guess, really, all right? Looking like a big pink crayon. Or as my uncle would say in his main accent, Tanky's big pink crane. So I start yelling at my dad and uncle for them to get the dog away. But to my dismay, they're both watching this all unfold, doubled over in laughter. Thankfully, I was able to get away from Tanky before any real damage was done and he got what he wanted. After I escaped, I started screaming at my dad and uncle, what the hell? Why wouldn't you help me? Why wouldn't you get him off? And my dad goes, we were not about to help that dog get off. <laughs> I have these preconceived notions in my head that I can't seem to get rid of. Like every time I see a guy with a neck tattoo, I say to myself, don't ever trust anyone with a neck tattoo. I think we're good, I checked all of you. <laughs> like it could be Steve from Blue's Clues singing along to a children's song, but suddenly put a neck tattoo on that guy and I'm convinced that he just shanked five people. Ah, oh, man. Growing up, uh, it also didn't take me very long to figure out that I wasn't gonna be very tall. I got pretty depressed by this fact, thinking what real mark on the world has a short guy ever made? And then I thought of my dad's first cousin who was a jockey and won the Kentucky Derby on Dust Commander in 1970. Thinking that's it, problem solved. I'll just carry on the family legacy of being a winning jockey. And then I happened to Google the average weight of a winning jockey and discovered it to be about 125 pounds. And that dream of mine went out the window in third grade, you guys. I do have a pending appeal out with Churchill Downs, though, to see if they'll allow me to enter the race riding two horses at once. So cross your fingers for me, please. I'm a 34-year-old man in a 65-year-old man's body. I take Metamucil every day. I have a handwritten list of everywhere I can use my Dine Around Club card. And I have to sleep upright in a recliner if I eat dinner anytime after 5 p.m. It's okay though, it's all right. Because I learned a long time ago, guys, that 70 plus is my age demographic with the ladies. And not only do they appreciate a guy that can bite corn directly off the cob, they also like a guy that can stay awake for the entire hour of the price is right, so. See me after the show if you wanna date. Bring your AARP card. Oh man, 
was crazy. Uh, I was on a puddle jumper plane and I went to buckle my seatbelt across my waist and it wouldn't fit. Obviously I'm a big guy, you guys can see that, but I'm not that big. And that's the first time that's ever happened. So I'm not about to call attention to my corpulence and ask the flight attendant for a seatbelt extender. So when the flight attendant does bring out, uh, you know, go through the, the cabin, bring out maybe a drink before we take off and she makes sure everybody's buckled before we take off, I hide my belt under my coat. And this whole messed up situation got me thinking. If this plane really does go down, it won't matter. Like, couldn't you guys see that news story? In other news, Flight 98 was forced to make a crash landing today. Thankfully, 384 passengers on board were unharmed, but one fat fuck that couldn't buckle his seatbelt, well, he died. Back to you. That wouldn't happen. Uh, I, uh, I was granted a Make-A-Wish by Make-A-Wish, ironically enough, <laughs> when I was about three years old. And uh, they sent me to Disney World with my family. It's memories that I'll have forever and I'll always be grateful. However, if three-year-old me knew then what 34-year-old me knows now, I wouldn't have wished for a trip to Disney World. I would have wished for a good metabolism and a girlfriend. <laughs> If 13-year-old me got the wish instead of three-year-old me, I absolutely assure you, I would have wished for a lifetime supply of Jergens lotion. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'd wish for that right fucking now. Uh, I've been having a real hard time getting out of bed in the morning lately, and I've been thinking I should probably invest in an alarm clock that would motivate me to get up. And I was thinking it would be real cool to get one that used celebrities. Like the alarm would go off, and it would be Bill Clinton, I do not need an alarm. No, baby, I don't need one now. I am always up. Hi. Or Barack Obama. You got up late yesterday, but there is hope. Today is a new day and you can change. But you're gonna be late if you don't get up. Or uh, the late, great Gilbert Godfrey. Man, it feels weird saying that. He'd be another good one. <laughs> You're still in bed? Son of a bitch! <laughs> or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he might be my favorite. He'd have a few different alarms. Get to the crapper! <laughs> Sleepy time is terminated! <laughs> Snooze button! <laughs> You guys probably thought a lot of different things about me when I first got up here, but I doubt Cancun swimwear model ever came to anyone's mind. Well, it's true. I was in Cancun and had just got out of the pool to go to the bathroom. I had on a swim shirt and this hat, and I'm walking back to the pool when I noticed this beautiful tall girl alongside me in a bikini. I guess I was pretty oblivious to my surroundings. I was just thinking what any guy in a bathing suit would be thinking at that moment. Don't get a chub. And then I look down and notice her footwear and I'm like, what the hell? Is this girl about to walk into the pool with stilettos? Only then did I realize I had walked into the middle of a swimwear fashion show and my buddies were watching this all go down from the other end of the pool. So I decide I need to play this off pretty quickly or I'm gonna end up looking even more stupid. So I get onto the pool steps and I strike a pose. <laughs> I was smiling with my eyes, and I strut a little bit. You're welcome. For their benefit. That's when my buddy yells from the other end of the crowded pool, introducing the fall 2019 collection from Paddington Bear. <laughs> Fucking jerk. If not for him, I definitely would have had a chance with that model. Girls love Paddington Bear. Thank you very much, I'm Nick Dufault. But he can't get it here, he's gotta go somewhere else. All right, this next guy, uh, to the untrained eye, kinda looks like me. <laughs> uh, my name is Ian McDonald. I 
did my first open mic in November of 2018, and then it was about six months before I really got into it. I did it for about a year before everything uh, shut down. Uh, I'd say my personality on stage is, it's an element of my, my full personality, uh, maybe just exaggerated a little bit, um, very low key, I guess, uh, a little, little bit downplayed. Definitely a big fan of Stephen Wright. Uh, I don't necessarily try to emulate any one comedian in particular. Uh, I've watched a, a lot of comedy. Uh, my favorite comedian was Norm Macdonald, who we sadly lost last year. But uh, he was—he's was my favorite comedian. Um, but uh, I, I do watch a lot of comedy. Uh, I, I, I try to, to sit and write every day if I can, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge for sure. Uh, most of the material I come up with is something that, uh, that I would maybe not be able to keep myself from saying in a, in a conversation with someone and, uh, get a laugh and then write it down and, and edit it to a scenario where it's like you didn't have to be there necessarily to so try and make it so that people I'm talking to in the room feel like they were there for that conversation. Uh, I, did a, I did an open mic uh, at, a, at a church. It was a regular open mic and uh, so they let me do like 15 minutes. I'd only been doing comedy for a few months at that point. And I got very few laughs. Uh, the woman who was hosting it was actually groaning at most of the things that I was saying. Sitting right by, I, I filmed all my sets and I have, so I have this on video, but uh, she was sitting right there and just like pounding on the table and just like groaning and uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. Um, that was probably my, my worst one. Um, uh, one of my one of the best gigs that I did was probably for the the biggest audience that I've had. It was I think 265 people at Lost Valley for a comedy festival uh, Maine's Wicked Funny Laugh Off contest from the River Comics. I think was the name of it in 2021. That was a, that was a great experience. <laughs> oh, there's trumpets starting upstairs. Pay no mind. My name is Ian McDonald. I recently became a homeowner under the name Gertrude Hollister. <laughs> Saw a headline in the news the other day said Alec Baldwin shoots down all responsibility to the incident on the set of Rust. I feel like they could have chosen some better words <laughs> for that article. I also saw an article that said 58% of Americans get their information about the conflict in Ukraine on social media platforms, while 65% of Americans get their information from traditional news sources. I'm personally just glad that 123% of Americans are paying attention to what's going on in the world. I had a bunch of other topical material prepared for tonight, but I accidentally ingested all of it. If someone wanted to call Poison Control, it would be appreciated. I did have some pretty good angles on some of them, so I'm just glad I didn't think they were suppositories. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about the pandemic. I, uh, I know we all had a similar experience the first 16 months of that ordeal. 
self-isolation and quarantine, spending our time carving soapstone statues of friends and loved ones to keep us company at night, <laughs> making small leather saddles for rodent rodeo, <laughs> or the time that we tunneled under the neighbor's fence and yard in the dead of night to get to the barrels of sweet, sweet cider. <laughs> and fantastic Mr. Fox had some great ideas. <laughs> A friend of mine grew up in Lewiston, right over by the country kitchen factory, and uh, he said that at night you could smell them baking bread. I grew up in Auburn near Tambrans, <laughs> and at night you could smell them cooking the tampons. <laughs> Not quite as pleasant. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, the Maine State Prison is located in Warren, Maine, surrounded by the towns of Hope, <laughs> and Union, and Friendship. It's all very inspiring. I had gone to visit recently. Everyone there was so friendly. I do feel like maybe they were just after my pudding. <laughs> it's a nice place, but I don't think I'd want to stay. It's actually all I had prepared. I was expecting more laughing. <laughs> Three of my very good friends lost their apartment when their building burned to the ground at the beginning of 2020 and they stored the few belongings that they were able to salvage in my apartment during the first 16 months of the pandemic. And it was really starting to smell like a campfire. <laughs> it's tragic. Silver lining though, they'd been wanting to move for a while and they had a lot less stuff to move. <laughs> I love my friends, but I'm glad for their suffering. <laughs> One of them was actually so devastated that he was going to hang himself, but he lost all the rope in the fire. <laughs> I am glad they survived. Uh, three funerals would have been incredibly incredibly difficult to work into my hectic schedule. <laughs> the worst part about all of this is that it happened on February 29th of 2020, a leap day. So I can really only properly celebrate the anniversary every four years. <laughs> Been trying to, trying to get in shape been been exercising a little bit more. Uh, been really working on my core. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, I'm still not able to do a handstand, but I did find I could do this hand thing while standing here. <laughs> Thanks. I could keep it up all night. <laughs> my doctor really only wants me to do so many reps, though. He says I'm way too energetic. <laughs> I should probably probably give that a rest. Been going on a lot of runs lately. I like to wear a bathing suit for maximum chafing. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to eat better. Been eating a lot more vegetables. Got a pretty funny look last week, walking down Main Street with a pumpkin. <laughs> Just gnawing on it. <laughs> been eating a lot more carrots, uh, really plowing down the carrots, you know. Um, I did read that if you eat too many carrots and overdose on carrots and your skin will turn orange. Uh, if that happens, I'm just gonna remove my shins and become a chocolatier. 
a big salad at a restaurant recently. It was called the Titanic. I was really excited. I, uh, I wish I wish I had read the, the menu a little bit closer. Came to the table. It was I was really excited. It had cabbages and carrots and cucumber, onion. Dug in. There's a big piece of iceberg. <laughs> really sunk it for me. Is <laughs> so anybody here trying to Beyond Meat? Anybody here trying to Beyond Meat? Yeah, One time. One time? Did you like it? Um, it was okay. It was okay? I was thinking about trying Beyond Meat. I, I don't know. It, it seems kind of expensive and a little bit risky buying all that meat and just letting it go bad. <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking about maybe instead doing like an, an all oxtail diet. Uh, cause the tails just grow back so you don't have to feel guilty. <laughs> and uh, if someone were to say ollie ollie oxen free, just pop that bad boy in a pen and I'm good to go, set for life. I feel like I may have missed my window of opportunity since 2021 was the year of the ox. I've actually never tried oxtail. Um, but if it's if it's anything like cow tails, <laughs> those things are delicious. You guys want to see a few impersonations? Yeah. Uh, and that's my cat when it comes across something it doesn't quite trust. <laughs> that is a spray bottle that a waitress was using at Burns Irish Pub in Brunswick, Maine on March 22nd, 2015. <laughs> That's a screaming goat. <laughs> That's a motorcycle. <laughs> Thanks. I've been, been working on that one. I feel like it's come along very nicely. Eight hours a day really only get you so far. <laughs> I was talking to somebody about, about motorcycles recently. Uh, this young guy he just got his, his license to drive a car. He said, as soon as I can, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my motorcycle license. He's like, oh really? That's cool. He's like, yeah, I just I like the idea of riding a motorcycle. It seems very freeing. I don't know what could be so freeing about clutching for dear life to a piece of moving machinery as you hurtle down the highway, but I don't know. Anybody here ever been out of state? Cool, awesome. Yeah, I, I went out of state once. I have a car, in case you were wondering. Um, and um, I was driving down I-95, in case there was any confusion about that. Uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed this before, but there's a sign in New York that uh, it says, uh, Maine, worth a visit, worth a lifetime. And there's an 800 number. So you, you can call Maine. <laughs> I did. Uh, the person on the phone was really helpful. Uh, she directed me to the lost and found. And uh, I was able to get my hat back. So I, I do recommend 
checking out that sign the next time you're on your, your way out of state. It's very, very helpful. I, uh, I've never purchased a mattress or a bed because I, I've always had them gifted to me. I guess I have that look. <laughs> like I need a bed. <laughs> no, I had always had a futon. I thought I was doing really well at life, you know, multitasking with a couch that turned into a bed. It turns out I was failing at life. I had an uncomfortable couch that turned into an even less comfortable bed. <laughs> uh, my parents got a divorce when I was about 30 years old. And you would think that given my age at the time, it would have been easier to understand and process everything that was going on. But it was actually pretty messed up because I understood everything that was going on. I imagine they stayed together for the kids. They wanted us to know how to be in a loveless relationship. <laughs> I am a drummer by day. Boom. People are always telling me, don't quit your day job, and I say, okay. <laughs> Drums are really expensive. Uh, drumsticks themselves start at about $10 a pair. A friend of mine su suggested that I get a lathe to make my own and save money. But I don't want people to think that I'm lazy. <laughs> Any wine fans in the audience tonight? A few people? All right. Yeah, they say once you go Pinot Noir, you never go Blanc. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, growing up, my brother and I shared a room up until my sophomore year in high school. We had bunk beds. Given the age, one or the other of us each night would make the tower shake. But uh, he's left-handed and I'm right-handed, so every once in a while things would sync up and it would keep pretty stable. <laughs> he came out differently than I did. Uh, he was delivered cesarean. Aluminum is the smallest amount of alu that you can have. <laughs> I have to apologize for my energy level tonight. Uh, I was up really late last night alphabetizing my t-shirts. Went to bed when I realized they were all t-shirts. <laughs> Does anybody here have any dreams? Yeah, me too. I have a dream to someday saddle and ride a manatee. I also have a dream to go to a buffalo sauce factory and watch them freshly squeeze the buffalo. time. I'll throw in on gas and tolls. <laughs> Seriously, I'm desperate for company. <laughs> My mom says I'm good at making friends. I hope that's true. <laughs> I heard a mockingbird the other day. It was like, nice hat. <laughs> I wasn't even wearing a hat. <laughs> Hadn't gotten it back yet from the lost and found. Before I go, I'd just like to share one last thought with you all.
Thanks. <laughs> We have reached that time. It is our last comedian of the evening. Johnny friggin' Ader! Woo I started with a bunch of guys. I actually started with a, my buddy Tuck, who's, uh, uh, who's still doing it. And uh, he actually started about a year ahead of me. And uh, so yeah, I, and I, I started, I took a class, a, a workshop, down, in, uh, down at the Portland Comedy Connection with a guy named Tim Farrell. And uh, real nice guy. and. Uh, I, in 2003, I did this uh, this graduation show. They do a graduation show at the end, and I'm like, I freaking killed it! And I was like, Oh my god, I I really like this. So, um, you know, you write five minutes of comedy and you go up and you do your thing. And uh, so, I really from that point on, I started doing more and more and more and more gigs. And then I. Uh, and I just started doing it, and then you know, eventually, you know, you have your you have your bomb, your first bomb, and uh, you get on stage, and you're like, oh my god, I'm so good, and then all of a sudden, you just the audience is quiet, and you're like, what the heck did I do? But it was, you know, that's just part of part of the business. You know, you got a bomb now and then, but um, I've had some awesome shows though over the last 19 years. I really have awesome, awesome shows. Um, I've been, I've done a lot of sold out shows. I've done some uh, some shows where there's just five people, and it's and they're all good, you know. I, I always think, you know, you just bring bring the best you got every time you go on stage. You bring the best you got, and uh, you give the audience what they want. I, I'm uh, I'm this, but a lot more exaggerated. I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of known for my rubber face. I do a lot of facial expressions. And uh, so when I do a show and there's really poor lighting, you know, half of my set's gone. But it's, uh, but most of the time, I, you know, there's really good lighting and stuff. So my, my buddy, Tim Farrell, who's, uh, who, who was like my, you know, the mentor, he, um, he said, Johnny, you got a million dollar face, use it. And, uh, you know, so I just, when he said that, I was like, oh my God, that's, is exactly what I gotta do. Um, I kind of put on my main accent a little more when I'm on stage because it's just you know people want to hear it, so I do it. <laughs> and I'm I'm a one of them comics that gives the, gives the audience what they want. You know, you just get out there and you just give them give them the funny, bring the funny, really bring the energy. You know, I see a lot of comics that you know and there's there's some comics that can just be up there and be really quiet. And I'm just like burst of energy when as soon as I get on stage. It's, which is which is who I am. So it's, I, I love doing it. All right, my best gig was uh, Chocolate Church, sold out show. Uh, they were filming, and it was just it was you know 400 people. Uh, it was just I was headlining. Actually, there was another headliner before me that actually went on after me, so I wasn't really the headliner, but. Um, actually, no, I was. I was the headliner. The guy that went before me should have been the headliner because he was really, really good. And uh, he just killed it. And uh, so I went on after him. I did pretty good, but it was just so much fun. Uh, worst show I've ever done, I did a, a, I'm not sure if you remember Lucid Stage, but the day that it, the day before it closed, they had, a, a, they had one, one more comedy show there. And they got that black box theater and it was really great. And uh, so I was like, oh, I can't wait to do this. Never did it. And I, and I was painting this guy's house. I said, hey, come on down. We'll, we'll, this will be great. The place will be packed. So I got in, the, I got in to do the show. And it was, it was him, his wife, their son, and one other person, four people. And I did 45 minutes for four people. And it was, it was pretty painful. But they enjoyed it. So. <laughs> You guys doing good? Yeah. Hey Brenda! Hello. How are ya? That's Ian's mother right there. <laughs> Freaking Ian's mother, Brenda. 
Are you a sister to Brenda or are you just no, a friend? I'm a friend. Good to see you. What's your name? Beth. Beth. Nice to meet you, Beth. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How is everybody? You guys doing good? Yeah. Woo, right, guys. Good. How about another big round of applause for all the comics you've got today, huh? <laughs> Up here working hard, working, working hard, you know, working hard. And shit, you know, for you guys, freaking working hard. Hey guys, I got some freaking Johnny Ada t shirt right here. All right, right here, Johnny freaking Ada t shirts, that's me. <laughs> and if I, sell, if I sell 35 of them, I can get back to Lewiston tonight. All right, I just want. So anyway, yeah, I got them out back if you guys want one. If you don't want one, just freaking walk right by me. Don't even look at me. That's what people usually do. They go, I ain't buying one of them fucking t-shirts. There's no freaking way. God, no, I can't afford that. Freaking 175 bucks for a t-shirt. That's crazy. There's no freaking way I'm buying one of them. Freaking, I, I got this freaking t-shirt. Well, you can buy that one. That's 400 right there for that fucking thing right there. 400 for that one. Go in once, twice, sold. You want to buy it, sir. Okay, good. Oh my God, it, feel good. it feels good to do comedy again, though. I tell you, it really does. Before the pandemic, I was all over the freaking state of Maine. I was, I call it the Fid Tour. It was like Rum Fid, Bitter Fid, Ox Fid, Sam Fid, freaking Hannah Fid. <laughs> I did a freaking show with Al Free and had a fit. They loved me. It was in the produce section, right? I was like, freaking check out these freaking coconut tea, you old bastards. Oh, feel good tonight? You guys feel good tonight? I feel good. I feel good. I'm going to go home and remove my wife's panties. Because <laughs> they are cutting into me wicked. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so those granny panties, too. They come up to you. I'm just kidding, I don't wear granny pants. I do have a thong on, though. I do, I do. It's a corduroy thong. It's a little chilly tonight. And, uh, you know the only problem with those corduroy thongs that makes that sound when you're running? It's like, zip, zip, zip. Kind of freaking weird. Oh, I don't know. I got a big announcement to make for a huge announcement. I just celebrated 34 freaking years of sobriety, which is really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I gotta tell you, thank God for pot. Never could have done it. Uh, don't I like the reefer? You guys sitting here going, yeah, me too. Man. No, I do. I don't smoke pot though. Crack, I love crack though. Jesus, let's get some shit done on crack. Woo! I'm not sure if people that do crack do that, but I just, <laughs> I'm like, you ever see somebody on crack? I don't know. They, 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 it's kind of like dry humping, you know, it's like, I'm in a big bag dry humping. I don't know, I love, I used to dry hump everything. I'd be like, hey, hon, how you doing? Just dry humping again. I gotta see what the hell's in this freaking thing anyway. Oh my God, look at that. That is crazy down there. It's a great big freaking hole. You guys want to come over here and see it? Hi. <laughs> we can do the rug again. Anyway, I did just become a grandfather for the first time, which is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My first grandchild, little Horace Enoch Mason Cuffett Ada. Yeah, little girl. And uh, she's, she's beautiful, 25 pounds, 9 ounces. Little freaking mean girl. She's freaking round. You know they say we all grow up to become our parents. You ever hear that? Grow up to become your parents. That's true. <laughs> it's weird though, because I got my mother's mustache and my dad's boobs. <laughs> I feel bad for my sister Todd. She's got my mother's mustache and my dad's penis, which is kind of weird, but it's all good. It's all good. Sorry, did I just spit a little bit? I'm sorry. It's gross. That was just gross. I let me wipe that off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. No, I uh, no, it's 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 crazy though. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I just I got a cousin. Okay, I got this cousin. Lost one of his friggin' thumbs in a chainsaw accident. The only problem is he friggin' if he hitchhikes everywhere he goes. It's weird. He got stuck on that friggin' roundabout down in Bath where I live. Friggin' two weeks he was down there. Johnny, come get me. I'm stuck on this roundabout. 
<laughs> Freaking weird. Where's my married people? We got some married people in here. Married? Nice. How long have you been married, sir? Oh, since last August. Since last August? Really? That's awesome. August 14th, yeah. August 14th. That's awesome. So one year. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Wait a minute. One year. No, it's like six months. Yeah. That's really, you guys still must know it then. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. He's still doing it a lot. That's good. He's freaking right. That's great. You ever go shopping with your wife? Yeah. Do you? If I have to. If you. <laughs> you might not be married much longer there, but I go shopping with my wife. She's always like this. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Put that back. Put that back. You can't eat that yet. Don't eat it yet. And I'm, I'm like, what am I? Like freaking three years old here, for God's sakes. I said, if you can help me out of this shopping cart, I'm going to go sit in the car. <laughs> we were down at the beach the other day. It was a beautiful day out. It was like 50 out. And we were like, let's go to the beach. We were down at the beach. We heard this guy hollering to his daughter. He was like, Montana, Montana. My wife looks at me. She goes, wonder where that baby was conceived. <laughs> I said, hey, Shaw's parking lot, 7-Eleven, let's go. Where's vaccine? Where the hell vaccine go? Come on, vaccine. Hon, have you seen self-checkout anywhere? <laughs> Where the hell is he? Self-checkout, get over here. Oh, I did it at the self-checkout. What's the big deal? Uh, a lot of you folks might think I look familiar. Just think of Benny Hill and Captain Kangaroo had a freaking baby. Am I right? Who remembers Captain Kangaroo by applause? We know, we got some people that know Captain Kangaroo. Remember Mr. Green Jeans? Love Mr. Green Jeans. I never knew why they called him Mr. Green Jeans, though, because we had a black and white TV. We finally got a color TV. Did you have a black and white TV? Yeah, yeah you, right, you had the rabbit ear antennas going up, the aluminum foil going across the middle. You had, to, you had to actually get up out of your freaking seat to go change the channel, you know? And then you had to, the channel changer would freaking took you, it would break off eventually, and you had to use a pair of vice grips, right? <laughs> Somebody took the vice grips, you couldn't watch freaking TV anymore. Everything, everything changed one night when my brother Earl, he walked by the TV, he's got a metal plate in his head, right? We got freaking cable. I couldn't believe it, it was awesome. Okay, you guys don't like the freaking handicap jokes. Okay, good, good to know. He, he didn't have a metal plate, it was aluminum. Anyway, it was... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, I, I love auctions. I love auctions. I love, you like auctions? You ever been to an auction? You know the only problem with the auctions? That guy talks so fast, right? You ever hear him? That he's like, sold. I'm sitting there going like this. Can I buy something? Oh my God, I love couches. 1,200 bucks, that's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's even better is that freaking old man guy auction, you know, the guy at the Grange Hall up in freaking Eustace, you know, he's up there, you know, he, he talks really slow, he's like, <laughs> trying to make the old man faces. <laughs> Okay. Uh, first item up for bed is this chest of drawers that I got from my grandfather when I was 14 and I refinished it because it was out in the rain for almost two years. <laughs> and I refinished it. And it's got a nice patina on it now. <laughs> Let's time the pit now to thirty dollars. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, how about twenty? <laughs> if somebody gives me thirty dollars, will you take it off my hands? Oh my God. Anyway, new joke, okay, great. Anyway, it's coming, it's coming. I'm like, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. What's your name, Mike? How'd I know that? Oh, wow! Somebody told me your name was Mike. So you're, you're taking drumming lessons from Ian, huh? Yeah. How's it going? Good. Is it, you like it? 
Was, so you, have you always wanted to be a drummer? <laughs> you don't really give a shit, do you? <laughs> like, I don't care, you can talk to me if you want. I'm not gonna say much. <laughs> I don't really give a shit. Where are you from, Mike? I live in Bowden. You live in Bowden, you're right? Well, you're right up in my neck of the woods. I, I live in Bath. Yeah. Did you hear about the foxes up in Bath we had up there? The little fox problem, we had rabid foxes. It was awful. Well, I had one happen, no, really, I had like nine rabid fox attacks, true story. And uh, I was in front of my, I was at my shop one morning, and right out in front of my freaking house on Middle Street, right out in front of my freaking house, there was a freaking fox attack. I'm sitting, there, I'm sitting in my shop, and I hear this woman outside screaming at the top of her lungs. I go outside, swear to God, there's a woman out there, she's got a freaking fox by the throat going, ah! Like, oh my god, oh my god, what do I do? So I'm running around, I'm like, right, so I went in the house for like three hours till the screaming stopped. And I was like, I hope she's all right, I don't know. <laughs> Holy crap, that was scary. Whew. I think I saved a life, but anyway. My wife's got this friend, she's got this friend on Match.com. Did you guys meet on Match or anything? Like, a, yeah. What'd you guys meet? At a bar dance. At a bar dance, nice. Was that freaking auctioneer there talking? <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to him. <laughs> this is August and it's hot, but if you want to marry him, I, I'm also a minister. <laughs> and I can marry you right now if you want. We'll start the bidding off at $20. <laughs> I, I can tell by looking at you, uh, that's a wicked smile, that's awesome. My wife though, she's got this friend that she's met on Match.com, right? Match.com, and, she, and uh, she's been on Match.com, and she's been through like 80 friggin' profiles, right? She can't find a friggin' match. Finally, she came up to the house the other day, swear to God, she comes up, she goes, I finally got a match. Turns out it was her friggin' brother. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. They're going out now, they got to <laughs> They got a lot in common, same mother and father. <laughs> it's great, they're doing great. So anyway, boy, I like the music upstairs, huh? That's nice. Hopefully, you know, it's not too distracting. But it's good, good music. It's your background. <laughs> <laughs> It's called a belly dance. <laughs> Brenda's in there going, oh my god. Put it away, Johnny. <laughs> Would you say you want to see more? Would you say, Brenda? Here, your mother wants to see more. She goes, I want to see more, Johnny. All right, I'll freaking do it. I don't give a shit. All right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm trying to get in shape, but I am. I'm trying to get in shape. I tried lifting weights. I'm them freaking things heavy, huh? <laughs> Holy crap, those things are heavy. Oh my god, it's terrible. You know what it is? I gotta lay off the devil dogs. I really do. I, gotta, I love devil dogs. They gotta be the driest food on planet Earth, aren't they? You ever eat a devil dog? They're like, <laughs> what's that shit they put them in? Like drywall mud? <laughs> I think they should have taken two devil dogs, put them in front of Hurricane Katrina, would have sucked it right now. There's your hurricane right there, and those two devil dogs, you're welcome. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to get in shape, though. I'm trying to get in shape. I am, yeah, it's terrible. I don't like to brag, folks, but I was actually captain of my football team in high school. Yeah, football scholarship, University of Phoenix online. And, uh, and now, uh, trying to get into Kaplan, they wouldn't bring it take me. <laughs> Starting to get the man boobs a little bit. You got them, but I can see them from here. For God's sake, freaking man boobs. Freaking weird. I walked by a baby the other day. The baby goes. <laughs> so I fed it, right? And I'm like, <laughs> thank God I was lactating, right? You know. <laughs> Save that one again. I don't know. Just had the prostate check the other day. Had the prostate check, Mike, at all lately? Prostrate, you know, the old thing, yeah. I went in the other day, I went into the urinologist guy the other day, and he's freaking, 
Oh, God. There was another guy that was never done it before, an intern guy. And I'm like, so, like he says, can this guy have a turn first? I'm like, are you shitting me? This is going to happen twice? I said, all right, 50 bucks. And, uh, so I gave him the 50 bucks and got the fuck out of there. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I don't need this shit. I don't need this shit. Anyway, I took a CPR course the other day. Where's my CPR people? Anybody know CPR? Thinking, right, Frank CPR, what they want to do now, the chest compressions, they want to sing the song, and what is it? Staying alive, right? It's like this. Stop singing. Oh my God. I had a chance to use it though. This guy was laying down right in front of me over, over in Bath at, at Maxwell's. And I'm like, oh my God, let me see if I can remember how to do this. I run over to him. I'm like, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Another one bites and dust. Shit. <laughs> we can kill that guy right there. I did do the Heimlich maneuver on this lady one time. I'm not sure if I did it right because she's pregnant now, but it's uh. <laughs> It's just gross, isn't it? <laughs> On a good note, I saved a life and created a life on the same friggin' night, which is pretty cool. So I'm a house painter. That's what I do during the day. I'm a house painter. My logo was established 1983, quality since 1987. <laughs> I put an ad in the paper last week. It says, looking for painters, teeth and driver's license optional. <laughs> Must be willing to work at least one friggin' day a week. <laughs> and I'll pick her up at your mother's house. I got 14 calls from the mothers. Come get this bastard. He's drinking all my Allen's coffee brandy. Smoking all my Paul Malls. It's not right. Get him to work. I'm like, I had a guy fall off a ladder a couple of years ago. Fell off a ladder, true story. Fell right on his back, 20 feet. I swear to God, he gets up, he goes, that's how you fall off a ladder? I'm only gonna show you once. <laughs> Thank God we were all drunk, because that would have just been, that would have been horrible. It really would have been. So married people, so married, yeah, you guys are still doing it, that's good. I got, <laughs> you ever practice the art of seduction, sir? The art of seduction? No, I'm real, I'm a crude bastard. You're a crude, you just, you just don't say, hi, Mark, go do it. Just go do it, honey. I got two words that explains my sex life. It's called planned and organized. Every Wednesday is two o'clock. <laughs> it's weird. It was a friggin', it was like a friggin' Tuesday the other day. I said, honey, wanna go do it? She goes, what'd you say, pervert? <laughs> <laughs> so we just started this hot dog stand at our house, right, right outside our house. And we're sitting there trying to figure out what to name this friggin' thing. And my son, he goes, dad, how about doggy style? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> He goes, what? I said, where'd you see that? He goes, it was on the calendar, Wednesdays, 2 o'clock, doggy style. <laughs> it was just weird. So like, you can't say that. You're freaking three. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't know that word. Oh, anyway. So I got my wife and I actually have this little thing that we do when we make love. We put a dollar in a jar next to our bed to save up for a vacation or something nice. I'm proud to say, folks, after 30 years of marriage, I'm going to be taking a trip to friggin' Savannah's next week. <laughs> See if there's somewhere I can spend that five bucks. <laughs> what my wife doesn't know is I have my own little job that I keep under the bed for myself. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about in a while, sir. <laughs> when we get back from Savannah's, I'm going to Cancun. <laughs> Just saying. We actually, you see, we're upstairs, right? We're upstairs just about ready to make love, you know? We call it making love now. You guys make love and you can do it. <laughs> yes, <Gascar>. her. <laughs> I don't know, what would you say it is, huh? No, so we're all right, but we're just about ready to make love. And she goes, you know what? We gotta start having no contact sex. 
not what you guys would think is when she takes her contacts out, and I bring up a different freaking guy. <laughs> We're just about ready to do it the other day. She goes, you know what? Another thing, I don't want you to make that goddamn face anymore at the end. <laughs> I'm like, what face? She goes, you know, this one. <laughs> so the end comes, I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> Goes back to the other one that makes you run a puncher right back. <laughs> oh my god. So I'm a Mainer. Where's my Mainers by applause? We got some Mainers in here. All right, Mainers. Love being from Maine. I love, I love, we like watching TV a lot here in Maine, right? Love watching TV. I think that I have like CSI Sabanis though, don't you? <laughs> Can't you? Can't you see it this coming this Sunday? CSI Sabanis. One car, one cop, one tooth. <laughs> Oh my God, John A. Looks like everybody in this town's got the same DNA. <laughs> they do. They do have the same DNA. What is this, Sabetas? What is Sabetas? Sabetas, that must be some kind of dental thing. Oh my god, I was playing Scrabble with this wicked Mana friend of mine the other day, and he kept on coming up with words like haul off on her. I was like, haul off on her. I did, haul off. I said, haul off on her is not a friggin' word. Then he put down, get off in it. <laughs> get off in it, it's like a freaking paragraph, you can't use it. Then he put down, book it. And I was like, all right, I'm looking this freaking thing up in the dictionary right now. Sure enough, there it was, book it. What you do after you haul off on her? I was like, what? It was crazy, man. Crazy. So, what, anybody like the Uncle Henrys? I love the Uncle Henrys. I love that. Love the Uncle Henrys. Yes. You like the Uncle Henrys? Oh, yeah. Gene? Is it Gene? Beth. Beth. Yeah, Gene. I thought it sounds like Beth. <laughs> Gene, Beth, you know, it sounds an awful lot. I wrote a few of them. I like that Uncle Henry's Free for the Taken shit. I wrote a few of them down here the other day. These are from Uncle Henry's Free for the Taken. <clears throat> Four tires, not bald, not much tread either. <laughs> Blind and lame goat named Larry. She's good with kids. 20 feet of rope. That's it. Jigsaw puzzle, some pieces missing. Uh, Schwinn road bike, no front wheel or handlebars. Rides good. <laughs> Uncle Henry is free for the taking. <laughs> Who's got dogs? Anybody got dogs? Oh, yeah. You got dogs? What kind of dog you got, bud? There's three pit bull mixes. Three pit bulls? Pit bull lab, pit bull hound, and pit bull uh, Roddy. Roddy. Pit bull Roddy? Okay, so you like the really like tough dogs. They're the black pack. They're the black pack. What's that mean? They're all black color. They're, they're all what? They're all black color. They're black oh, they're, oh, they're all black? Oh, they're, there's three of them. So you're a dog hoarder. <laughs> That's good though. That's awesome. I got two St. Bernards. Right. Oh my God. Don't those freaking things eat. Unbelievable. 25 pound 25 bag of food every other day. <laughs> it's awful. One of them came out and looks at me. He goes. We're always sneezing because of the hair. Don't people sneeze weird? How do you sneeze, huh? 
If you would have sneezed, Beth. I, mean, I bet you sneeze like this. I bet you go. <laughs> or you let it, oh, like that. <laughs> oh, you're a teacher, so you, you do this. I do this. Anyway, I was out the mall the other day. This lady in front of me, she sneezed just like Donald Duck. It was the weirdest thing. She's like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I get you? <laughs> I swear to God, she looks at me. She looks at me and she goes, oh, fuck off. It's weird. Listen, before I go, I just gotta ask, uh, I gotta ask the lady something. How many ladies have read the book Fifty Shades of Grey? You, you read it? You read it? You? Beth? <laughs> okay, Beth. <laughs> I don't know what you and I are doing tonight. You and I are going out to have a drink after this. I'm gonna give up 34 years of sobriety for you. <laughs> I'm actually writing a book right now about a couple from Sabanis. <laughs> Eunice and Larry. It's called Fifty Shades of Maine, the love story of Eunice and Larry. It goes like this. She walked in the room and her double layered flannel thong. <laughs> with nothing on top but bungee cords. <laughs> securing the girls. He laid on the bed in longing anticipation in his clean, tidy whiteies with a wicked boner. That's what we call an erection up in your name, right? Boner. Everybody just say boner for me once. Boner, yeah. boner. That's, that's just a good word. Wicked boner. You can have a wicked boner, that means you haven't had it for a while. You just have a boner, a regular boner, but you just did it a couple days ago, right? But a wicked boner is like, boy, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm freaking ready, because I got a wicked boner. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, I, I don't get boners much anymore, but I hurt about them. <laughs> Sorry, Brenda. All right. After checking each other for ticks, they sprawled out on the 65 by the 40 foot blue top. Covered in freshly tapped maple syrup, and he hauled off on her. That's what I've got for now. Thank you very much, folks. I'm Johnny Brigadier.